And it's time for our segment here on Wake Up Central, where we continue to answer your questions big and small. Now, our question this morning comes from Conway. What exactly is the origin of toad suck days? That's a great question. The first weekend of May, every year nearly 100,000 people flock, or should I say hop, to toad suck days in Conway. Since 1982, the festival has been a springtime tradition in Faulkner County. It began on the banks of the Arkansas River in a nearby township named Toad Suck before moving to its current location in downtown Conway 30 years ago. But what in the world does Toad Suck actually mean? According to legend, steamboats traveled the Arkansas River when the water was at the right depth. Now, when it wasn't the captains and their crew, they tied up to wait where the Toad Suck Lock and Dam now spans the river. While they waited, they drank up at the local tavern to the dismay of the folks living nearby who said they suck on the bottle till they swell up like toads. Hence the name Toad Suck. The tavern is now gone, but the legend lives on at Toad Suck Days. Our question this morning comes from Hannah, who visited the farmer's market for the first time last weekend. She asked how long has the river market actually been around? That's a great question. This visual in downtown Little Rock has become a symbol of the capital city nationwide. However, the official river market has not been here that long. The river market officially opened in Little Rock in 1996. The market is the cornerstone of a $300 million riverfront development project designed to utilize the scenic show of the Arkansas River, Riverfront Park, and existing historical structures along the riverfront, located in the Quapaw Quarter, the oldest section of the capital city. Inside the Ottenheimer Market Hall is a 10,000 square foot indoor facility open year round featuring a 40 foot vaulted roof. There is also the outdoor farmer's market with two covered pavilions totaling 15,000 square feet opening back up last weekend that allows farmers from all over the state to sell their produce and goods in the state's largest city. Now our question this morning comes from North Little Rock. Where did the travelers get their nickname? That's a great question. Baseball has officially returned to Dogtown as the Arkansas Travelers kicked off their 2023 campaign last night. The Travs and nickname is one of the oldest in professional sports. In fact, the Travelers have never taken a different nickname, making it the second longest running continuous nickname in minor league baseball, only trailing the Buffalo Bisons. The name Arkansas Travelers comes from the tale of the Arkansas Traveler, who roamed the Ozark Mountains, selling his wares and singing songs. The team was originally known as the Little Rock Travelers and was renamed for the entire state in 1957, becoming the first professional sports franchise named after a state. The Travelers originally played at Cavanaugh Field from 1896 through 1931. In 1932, the team moved into an all new steel and concrete facility in what was originally named Traveler's Field. In 1966, Traveler's Field was renamed to honor the late Ray Winder, who in 52 years rose from ticket seller to owner and eventually savior of the Travelers. It was Ray Winder who spearheaded the return of the Travs to Little Rock as a fan owned enterprise after a brief hiatus during the 1959 season. After 74 years, Ray Winder Field hosted its farewell baseball game in September of 2006 before moving to its current home at Dickie Stevens Park in North Little Rock. Now you might remember the basketball court at UA Little Rock's Jack Stevens Center. It was destroyed from extensive water damage, but just a few days later, players were back on the hardwood. So how in the world did Little Rock replace their court so fast? That's a great question. Just two days before Christmas, Little Rock Athletic Director George Lee knew he had a big problem on his hands when he got a phone call from women's head basketball coach Joe Foley. But Joe's not much for chit-chatting, so I don't get calls for Joe like on the, from, on the weekends and stuff like that. So when I see Joe Foley's name come up, I'm like, something's wrong. And so it's like, George, we've got water all over the court. A fan coil in a unit froze, causing a rupture. That resulted in water running downstairs onto the court for several hours. When I got here, um, 
you know, I almost joked that open the other doors and we can build an ice rink in here because, you know, there was an inch or two of water on the floor at that point. The Trojans were forced to move their conference opener to Simmons Bank Arena, but were determined to have the Jack Stevens Center ready to go for their January 4th game against Lindenwood. I called our facilities director for the university at that point and said, there's no way that we're ever going to be able to use this court again. So Lee was pointed to a company out of Tennessee, Prater's Flooring, that could actually provide the Trojans with a new floor in a hurry, arriving from Chattanooga in Little Rock on January 2nd. The concrete is dry at that point, so they unloaded all the pallets out here. And then at noon, we had a crew come in and they showed them how to put it together. And within about two and a half hours, the court itself was down. Crazy enough, the Trojans were back on the floor at the Jack on the very same court seen by millions on TV before. Kind of a neat, a neat thing to have a, the court that was on the USS Abraham Lincoln for Armed, Armed Forces Day. Now our question this morning comes from Little Rock. Is Little Rock the worst city for pollen in the country? That is a great question. More than 100 million Americans live with various types of allergies every single year, many of which have seasonal pollen allergies. The Asthma and Allergy Foundation of America released their annual report exploring how challenging it is to live with seasonal allergies in the top 100 U.S. cities. So where does Little Rock rank? Well, pretty high. The state capital ranks as the 13th worst city in America for pollen allergies in 2023. Little Rock scored a 77.9 out of 100 on the AAFA scale with factors such as worse than average pollen and medicine use. Now here's the good news. Little Rock ranks above average in terms of board certified allergists that are available. Wichita, Kansas ranks as the worst city in the country for pollen with a score of 100. Now our question this morning comes from North Little Rock. Was the actual old mill in North Little Rock really filmed for the classic movie Gone with the Wind? Well, that is a great question. One of, if not the most recognizable landmarks in Arkansas is the old mill. I say this is the crown jewel of North Little Rock, in my opinion, but um, probably one of the most photographed places in the state of Arkansas. But was it really filmed for the 1939 classic film? Sandra Taylor Smith is the director of the North Little Rock History Commission. Yes, it was. It was in Gone with the Wind in the very opening credits. You have to really watch it from the very beginning and just for a few seconds, but it was indeed. She says the old mill was built by developer Justin Matthews in 1933 during the Great Depression. And he built the old mill as a tourist attraction, thinking that people would come here and remember it, and then when times got better, they would come back. However, while there are many theories to why the location was chosen for the film, there is no concrete answer. Theory one involves former mayor Peter Fawcett. Uh, Mr. Fawcett had spent some time in West Hollywood, um, and it could be that he had seen some of the work in his travels. Uh, the other theory is that his architect, Frank Carmine, was sent on a tour of the Southwest to, and California to look at architectural styles, and he could have seen some of his work. And then there's another theory that there were travel logs that were done that were kind of shown before movies and theaters, and this may have been a travel log. Lucky for us Arkansans, we don't need a movie or a travel log to see the old mill. We can visit year round. Just absolutely stunning. Dogwood trees in the spring, in the fall, it's beautiful. So it's got, you know, character all year long. One of Arkansas's treasures, so the park is free and open to the public during daytime hours if you would like to visit. And it's super charming. It yes. looks like a fairy tale. A lot and of people there gather for photos. I was going to say, you had your wedding photos I did have my there. wedding photos there. I've seen lots of people there. You don't just take the day to 
to snap a few. It's you great. might have seen Hayden because he's been there. With, been there many for a time. Pictures. Graduation, family photos. Yep. Oh. I think I've, I think I've been in a wedding that was photographed there. Yeah. So wow. just everybody's been to the old mill. What yeah. a backdrop! I mean, just in our backyards, you know, and just hidden away there in that mm -hmm. neighborhood. It's so uh, interesting. It's beautiful, gorgeous. Yeah. That's a great. That's a that was a great question, <laughs> and now it's answered. Yeah, and that was the real one that came to North Rock and filmed for the film right there in North Rock. Very cool.